Welcome to part 8 of this Davon Data tutorial series, a Python crash course. The topic of this video is Python slicing. If you're unfamiliar, slicing is how you grab subsets of your data structures. For example, selecting a subset of data from a Python list. Python slicing is a fundamental skill for anyone interested in using Python for analytics and data science. So as always, please follow along with this video by typing the code that I type. Don't hesitate to pause or rewind the video if you need to. You learn Python by writing Python. As you can see here, I'm back in my data structures notebook. This is the one I've been using consistently for the last few videos. This will be the last video where I'm using the data structures notebook. So if you're following along, please be sure to save your work at the end of this video. Okay, so let's talk about slicing. So first up, per the usual, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a markdown slide, or a markdown cell, excuse me, slicing, okay. So you use slicing with lists, strings, and tuples. This is the way you can actually subset or grab pieces of data out of one of these data structures. So let's take a look at using strings first. Let's slice a string. So technically, accessing a single element is called indexing. And that's just a little bit of Python nuance here. So slicing is when you're actually getting multiple elements. If you're only getting one, technically it's called indexing, but for our purposes, we're just gonna call it all slicing in this video. So I got my string is equal to Python slicing, let's say. So I've got an object, it's called my underscore string. It happens to be of type string. And we can index or slice a single element like this. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, but it bears repeating, you always have to remember that Python starts counting from zero. So if I wanna access the second element of my string, I don't actually put in a two, I put in a one. And how I do that is using the square brackets. Once again, this is another example of how various characters, various syntax is overloaded in Python based on context. So in previous lessons, we saw how we use square brackets to declare lists, a data structure, an object. But here in the context, Python interprets this as slicing or more specifically indexing. So if I put a one in here and run this code, I get back the second string in the list, excuse me, the second string in the string. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, the second character in the string, which happens to be a Y. Can you tell that I'm excited? Okay, moving on. So Python does something really super cool, which is it supports negative indexing. And negative one gets the last item in the list. This is really cool. So if you've worked with any other programming language, like for example, SQL or SQL, you don't get to do this, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, so let's see how this works. My tuple equals, equals uh, A, B, C, and D, why not? So I got a tuple here. And as we know from the last lesson, tuples are immutable. You can't change them, but you can certainly access them using indexing. So I could say print my tuple negative one. So this should wrap around the back, right? Because A is zero and negative one is D. And then I can also print my tuple negative two. Oops, that's wrong. There we go, negative two. And that should actually give me C, right? So I start at zero, negative one, negative two. And if I print these guys out, sure enough, we get D and C, exactly what we'd expect. So negative indexing is really cool. So to be completely pedantic here, slicing is like indexing, but for multiple values. Just in case you ever go on a Python interview or something, that way you know the, the exact difference. But in practice, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna create a list here. Notice how my square brackets are now overloaded based on context. And I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five in my list here. And we can get the first two elements. Now this is where things get kind of funky, to be quite honest, with Python. It's not something I particularly like, it's just something I had to get used to. And notice this, I'm using a particular syntax here, zero colon two. You can think of the colon as essentially generating a range of values, a list of values, 
Or you can think of it in terms of English as being through. Create a list of zero through two. So zero, one, and two. Now, if I put four in here, of course, it'd be zero, one, two, three, four. But here we're doing two. Now, here's the interesting thing, though. Because Python starts counting from zero, the slicing functionality wants to make your life a little bit easier. So how the two is interpreted, as you can see here highlighted, is it says everything up to, but not including two. So if I run this, you see one and two. So this is zero element. This is the first element. So zero through, but not including two. And the reason for that is for stuff like this. Uh, let's do, let's wrap this in a print. And I'm gonna illustrate why the funkiness and, and, and slicing. If we do something like this, so if we say print my list, zero len of my list, as we saw in a previous lesson on lists, this will actually return back the number five because there's actually five elements in the list, but there isn't actually a fifth index in the list, right? It only goes zero, one, two, three, four. So by making this thing of up to, but not including the number, it actually gives you the ability to write code like this without getting any errors. So if I run this, notice that I get one, two, three, four, five. Go through zero up to the length of list, len returns back five, but it doesn't include five. So I just get zero, one, two, three, four. And of course I get everything back. So that's something that's critical to understand with slicing. So here's some other cool things that Python slicing allows you to do. So the index, before, well, I misspelled that. Whoop. The index before the colon can be left out. It's just kind of a handy dandy kind of you know, shortcut. Saves you a couple keystrokes, for example. So we can say, well, technically one keystroke. <laughs> so if we can run this and we can see, it assumes, since there's nothing in front of the colon here, it just assumes that we're starting at zero all the way up to, but not including two. So we get back item zero, which is zero, item one, which is two. And we can also, of course, use our negative indexes in a similar way. Now check this out. So my list, start at zero, go all the way up through negative one. So check out what you get here. Get one, two, three, four. So start at zero, start at zero, go all the way up to negative one, but don't include negative one. Negative one index is five. So of course, you get one, two, three, four. Exactly what you would expect. Now, here's another cool handy dandy thing that you can do if you want everything to the end. So I can do my list and I can start at element one, which will be the second index, right? Because we count from zero. And if I just put a colon here and I leave the other end off, it'll go all the way to the end of the data structure. In this case, the end of the list or the end of the tuple or the end of the string. And if I print this or run this, I get the output two, three, four, five, which is exactly what I expect. Start the second index and go all the way to the end, which is pretty handy. Now you can also do something even funkier yet. You can skip elements. Technically this is called striding in Python. You can also slice by skipping elements. This is known as striding. I'm gonna just show you this for a little bit of completeness here in the crash course, but technically I've never actually used this in any of my own Python code, so. There you have it, your mileage may vary. So my list, and then what we can see here is I do colon, colon two. And what that says is start at the beginning, go through the entire data structure, go through, in this case, go through every element of the list and only return me back every second piece of data. So if I run this, I get one, two, three, four, one, three, five, excuse me, which is exactly what we expect. One, skip two, skip four, there we go. And just to show you how it works with strings, let's do the same thing with my string. I just want to make sure that was the correct name that I gave it. Yes, my string, sweet. And then I can do boop, 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 and then run that. And then notice once again, I get the same thing. I'm skipping every other piece of character. And of course I get to make this a three or a four or whatever I want to do. So this is known as striding. And this is how you can slice by skipping elements. There you go. There's a lot more to slicing than this, but generally speaking, this is really all you need to get started with Python for analytics and data science. So don't forget to save your notebook. If you're following along, this is going to be the last time we use this. In the next lesson, I'm going to be creating a brand new notebook 
because we're going to start talking about control flow structures. This is how you control the execution of your Python code. And we're going to start with if else statements, a fundamental building block of making your Python code do exactly what you want it to do. So when that video is ready, there'll be a tile that'll show up on your screen. You can go ahead and click it and you can watch the next video in the series. If you like what you're seeing so far, please give the video a like. If you want to get all the updates for all the new videos that come out as they come out, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And lastly, if you know anybody that might benefit from this particular Crash Course series, let them know. Recommend it to them. So until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.